Aloha mai kako. Welcome to VKO Wednesday. I'm Kalavai Anunes. And I'm Hi'ilave Neves. Welcome to our weekly UHM TV social segment. This week, our UHM TV reporters created a how to video on different topics. Well, let's grab a paper and start with how to do origami with noi. Today, I'm going to show you how to make this origami lotus out of this. Let's get started. First, we'll open up our bunny-themed origami paper, which is just in time for the year of the rabbit. Origami paper comes in all types of colors, but for this demonstration, I will be using white. To start off, you'll fold every corner to the center of the paper three times. Be sure to crease the paper as evenly as possible to ensure that your petals will be symmetrical. Once you've done that, you'll go ahead and flip the paper and fold the corners to the center once more. Folding the petals is often the hardest step for me because I often end up ripping a petal or two. In order to avoid this, I recommend folding the tips of the corners and using your thumb to brace the petal as you are folding it backwards. You'll repeat this step for all corners of the paper. You don't need an origami paper for this specific design, but you'll definitely need a square piece of paper. I got into origami during high school when we would be forced to sit in assemblies. They would give us a rectangular sheet of paper, which I would tear into squares and make whatever I wanted to pass the time. I hope you enjoyed watching this and I hope that you try this out for yourself. It's really fun. Thanks for watching. Making origami is the perfect hobby to pick up. Speaking of hobbies, let's learn how to play lacrosse with Trevor Reed. What's up guys, this is Trevor Reed, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to use a lacrosse stick. So let's get to it. Zach is gonna be helping us out today, and all you're gonna need is a stick, a ball, and some gloves. Now the three main parts of a lacrosse stick are the head, the shaft, and the butt. If you look closely at the net on the head, you can see there's a little dip. That's called the pocket. It's so that it's harder for the ball to fall out when you're running. Now let's talk about how to hold the stick. When you're catching it, you're going to want to hold it a little bit higher so you have more control. Almost all times when you have the ball, you're going to be cradling the stick so it's a lot harder for the ball to fall out. And when you throw, you're going to want to hold it a little bit lower so you're able to throw it a little bit higher and further. Now when you get good at throwing it, you can learn some tricks, like Zach here. They are a little bit hard to learn and master, but once you do it, you won't forget them. Thanks for joining us today, and we hope to see you next time. All that sport talk is making me a little bit hungry. Me too. Let's watch Lobby's tutorial with her own spin on making pancakes. Aloha everyone, today we're going to learn how to make pancakes. Step 1, you're going to gather your ingredients. First, look at the list of ingredients, and then decide that it is just not worth it. And we have pancake mix, where you just add water. Step 2, follow the instructions on the bag. Or don't, it's really not that serious. Step 3. Whisk. Step 4. Begin cooking your pancakes. Step 5. Try not to start a fire. You need to leave. And 
And step six, don't forget to spray your pan. Step seven, repeat. And step eight, add peanut butter and syrup. After all this, now you're ready to serve. That was such a fun video to watch. Thank you. But speaking of fun, let's learn from the master chef, Maggie. Hi everyone, my name is Maggie Cipriano. I'm currently writing a story about a UH program that teaches inmates how to cook for college credit. Here's one of the recipes that they make while incarcerated. I have chicken, basil, parsley, salt, pepper, garlic, broccoli, chicken stock, mushrooms, cream cheese, and capers. First, slice up the mushrooms, mince the garlic, and now we have our prepped ingredients. Add oil to your pans, now, let's turn up the heat. Dump in the mushrooms and start searing the chicken. And give them a flip. Saute the garlic with the mushrooms. Add the cream cheese and the chicken stock base. And add some water to thin it out. White wine isn't allowed in the incarceration facilities, so we're gonna use caper juice instead. Once the sauce comes together, we're gonna add parsley and give her a stir. And finally, it's time to plate our food. We've got broccoli, chicken, and the sauce. Now we can sit back and enjoy our chicken with mushroom supreme sauce that Chef Lee makes with his students in the incarceration facilities on the island. This is what we made. Thanks for watching. Now let's see what Zor has to teach us. Hi guys, my name is Zora and today I'm going to teach you guys how to spin a ball on your finger. Now the first step you need to do is you need to pick which finger you are going to use. I like to use either my pointer finger or my middle finger. Alright, then the next thing you want to do is you want to make sure you get a low spin on the ball. If you get a low spin on the ball, it's easier for you to spin it. If you get too high, it's going to hurt your finger. So, and you don't want to hurt your finger. So, the next thing you want to do, when you spin the ball, you want to do kind of like the single leggies. And spin it in this type of motion, all right? So then after that, you're landing on your finger and voila, when you get good, you're real good, like the Harlem Glow charge, you get Tap it and make it go faster. That is how you spin a basketball. Thanks for watching. As college students, we all need to know how to make a good dinner on a budget. Shelby has us covered, and she's going to teach us how to make some ono food on a budget. How to create chicken katsu curry the Matos way. Because we were living in Kapole and going to school in town, we need something quick and easy to make for dinner because we're stuck in traffic. Start by washing, peeling, and cutting potatoes and carrots. with water and bring to a boil. Add in the potatoes and carrots to cook. When the potatoes and carrots are all cooked, add in the curry packet and let simmer for a few minutes. While that's cooking, create the katsu version of katsu. Today I'm using chicken nuggets, which isn't that uncommon in my household. Make sure to put that in the oven and let it crisp. Lastly, make your rice. I'm using leftover rice, which I didn't want to make big rice. But normally, I would just wash the rice and put it in the rice cooker. Now that everything's cooked, plate to serve and enjoy.
From dorm rooms to apartments, college students need to find ways to add their own personalities to their homes. Meg's got an eye for decor, and she's going to show us how to decorate a space with what you've got at home. I wish I knew how to redecorate your bleak and bare bookshelf the student budget-friendly way. Books are relatively expensive, so first reuse your old school books. Most of my books were digital, so these are the few physical copies I have. And ta-da! One shelf done. Next, I removed the thin notebook down a shelf for space. I don't have a lot of physical books, so let's fill the newly made space with ornaments. My mother gave me these ornaments to bless me for the new year, but also because I was born in the rabbit year. Next up is comics! These are the very few books I managed to take back with me from Japan and my favorite reads. Let me know if you know any of them. And lastly, a teddy bear to decorate the last bit of your shelf. This is the final look. I hope you enjoyed. I don't know about you, but when I decorate, I love to listen to music. Well, luckily for you, next up we hear from Kaya on how to play a cultural instrument. All right, gusui o tsuganabira. Today I'm going to teach you how to do samba. Not samba, but samba. I learned this from my aunties and cousins who've been performing Okinawan traditional dance pretty much their whole lives, and now I get to show you all. Sang means three, and ba kanji is actually ita, which could mean like plank or board, basically a slab of wood. Put that all together and you get this. First to hold it, you want to sandwich the samba in between your fingers, so your pointer finger and middle finger, and also make sure that the string is pointed away from you and the samba part is pointing towards you. Thumb first, and we'll add in a clap. Next level is to drag your fingers in a straight line from your pinky to your pointer. And similar from the last one, you're going to do the opposite motion from your pointer to your pinky. Combine it with the sunshine and you get this. It's really fun to play the samba, and if you practice and figured out how to do it, congratulations, you're now invited to every auntie and uncle's barbecues for the next few summers. So, yeah. One thing many students forget is to take in all the beauty around campus. Kalavaita's how-to informs us all about native plants we see every day. In the Ahupua'a of Waikiki lies the University of Hawaii at Manoa. The university houses many plants, some of them being native or endemic to Hawaii. Despite being brightly colored and scentful, some of these plants are invasive to Hawaii. Regardless, I fell in love with the plants here. Learning the Inoa Hawaii, Kauna, and La'au Lapa'au purposes for the plants here on campus. Connecting with the greenery of Ma'anoa grounds me to my Mo'omehu. Before graduation, a goal of mine is to identify all native plants the university holds. To reach that goal, I use these two resources to guide me. 
Guide to Native Hawaiian Plants by Noah Kekueva Lincoln, and Flowers of Hawaii by Daniel Evelyn Weber. Taking these resources out whenever I go on a hike, to the beach, or even just to school helps me realize the stories that these plants hold. Holding the pictures next to the species that I'm trying to identify is my how-to guide on identifying the plants here in Hawaii. Now, we've come to the end of this episode. We hope you enjoyed today's content and maybe learned something new. Mahalo for watching this episode of Ikio Wednesday. Comment down below what you learned. Aloha. Aloha.